is Team 28, Year 28 in Alabama, and it's one of the most athletic teams we've ever had. There's nine green light girls right now. Our strength coach, Michelle Diltz, is still convinced it could be 11, but they have the yellow light right now, so they're not there yet. What is a yellow light? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Go. Green light, yes, go. Red light, don't you dare go. Yellow is a maybe, but they're close. Um, and just athletes everywhere. The deepest pitching staff we've ever had. And just what they've done since Italy, basically, which was July 10th to now, has been amazing. Do you uh, have concerns for every season or oh, yeah. some little nagging thing? Oh, yeah. There's all, you know, like one of the things we do with our seniors is um, they meet at my house for a senior dinner. And there's about 12 questions that we ask, and it's no right or wrong answer. But one of the questions that we ask the seniors, and this year there's nine, what is your biggest concern for Team 28? And of course, they all say, well, what do you mean? You know, and I was like, it can be anything, on or off, you know. And of course, mine was, do you know what mine was? Yourself? <laughs> no. <laughs> How do we replace Montana Fouts? Yeah. Right? I mean, come on. And um, it was interesting, though. Their answers, none of them were the same, and none of them said Montana. So uh, it's just good to hear from a coaching perspective what they're concerned about. And, um, you know, we have six pitchers that are very capable. Lance has done a hell of a job again maneuvering six kids. We have two really, 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 really good catchers. Uh, we've been um, trying to test them in scrimmages. Like, I'll steal all the green light girls, and they're probably throw out percentages close to 90. I can't think of too many people that have stolen. Um, and then in a scrimmage, you know, the base runner gets a really, really early jump as well, but we're still throwing them out. So all around the field, just good athletes, and uh, we're ready to play somebody different. You mentioned um, your biggest concern being how to your place Montana. This is the first time in. As far as I could get back on the roster, I'm really since 2008 coming into the season, you don't necessarily know who the ace is. Do you know who the ace is, or is it going to be something you have to see, or is it just going to be a pitch by committee all year? I think it's going to be – we really have not seen somebody in that moment in the sixth and seventh inning where it's a 2-1 game and we're, we have a one-run lead, and you got to go out and get six outs. We haven't seen that really from anybody. Now, Jayla did a heck of a good job during regionals in the postseason. Um, but – that's a little bit different than doing it against SEC week in and week out. So I think it's going to be fun. We've done a couple of things in practice where we call it Thunderdome. And at the end of practice, whoever's in the bullpen, we call their name out. She comes out. We have five hitters. We put a complete defense out on the field. We have a lineup of those five hitters. If the pitcher strikes out two, she wins immediately of the, any, any of the five. If she walks to, the offense wins, or if the offense scores a run, they win. And it was four out of five pitchers won. And we're trying to get that, you know, last inning, anxiety, pressure, whatever. Uh, it's been fun to watch, very competitive. So I, I still think it's going to be um, as the season goes along. Murph, I wanted to ask you about Bailey since we're getting to her in a few uh, in a few minutes. Last year, it seemed like most of the time she was a DP, but I'm asking now: that, is there a chance she'll be more in the field this year than last year? Yeah, she actually, you know, at the beginning of the fall, um, she started playing a lot of third, and she okay. really looks pretty comfortable there. You know, she's she was a shortstop in high school in summer ball, played second base for us, shortstop for us, and. Um, I don't know, I think obviously when Ashley Prangy graduated and she was a two year starter and that spot is open, um, she's a smart kid. So she goes over to third base and it's been, it keeps getting better and better and better because it takes a lot of guts to play third in college softball because you're basically playing 50 to 45 feet from the batter every pitch. And if you don't have, um, you know, the guts to do it, you're not gonna play well there. You just, you have to be um, pretty brave but she's been doing really well there. So I guess Kahalen is still the shortstop. So is the rest of the infield set or is it still being battled for? Well, you have Kahalen, Dowling, Emma Broadfoot, Abby Dukeshire, Callie Hevlin, um, 
and then you could have Marley Giles, Riley Valentine, Jocelyn Brisky, or one of our pitchers, played first base in summer ball. Uh, you have Lauren Essman, who's a hell of a first baseman, probably defensively the best first baseman we have. She's a lefty lefty. She's very smooth over there. So there's a lot of moving parts, but Hevlin, Kahalen, um, Dowling, and Dukeshire are basically the four options in the middle. Emma's more of a corner. So it you know it comes down to every single year you have a 10 piece puzzle the 10th piece is the pitcher and then the nine pieces of the puzzle are are you one of the best nine hitters are you one of the best nine hitters are you are you are you are you and then if, if the answer is yes i have to figure out where you fit on the field and if katie can play second base and right field and there's not another right fielder that's one of the best nine hitters she's playing right field and we'll find some, the, another person to play second base. So they all know that's kind of the way we've done it. You know, we've had three-time All-Americans in the outfield that have never played outfield in their life until they got here. Caleb Rowe, one of them. So it's just what, bets, what fits best for the team. Talk about putting that puzzle pitch in the outfield, you know, three turn, returning starters as well. Could you just go into them and how they've, you know, taken that leadership role in the outfield and also having a new outfield coach this year? Yeah, well, let's go with that first. Bro has been awesome in the outfield, uh, even better than what I expected. I knew she was being a great coach, but um, she played here. She went home, started a career in television, um, worked for the Seattle Mariners pregame, postgame, worked for a PR company in uh, Portland, Oregon for a little bit, part-time and but she's doing great things and, and then obviously when Allie retired uh, I called her and I said hey let's go come back and she's just been terrific so I think you got to start with Jenna Johnson who's basically a four-year starter um, this is her COVID year finally uh, she's just been a great leader uh, one of the best um, outfield student coaches if you could call her that that we've had and then I think you also got to give a lot of credit to Kat Grill, who's also a senior and is kind of an unsung hero for us. And she has taken everybody under her wing as a lefty hitter, as a slapper, as a bunner, and then also as an outfielder. And she's got the best EQ on the team um, and knows what to say, when to say it. She picks her time. She's a great, great kid. Uh, but Christian White really came on at the end in center field. Still the fastest kid on the team. Does, definitely has the green light, not a yellow. <laughs> but um, her slapping is improving because of Bro, because that's what Bro did. And uh, maybe a cool story for some, one of you guys to write about her is, you know, in her high school career, uh, she got a hit in every single game. It was over 120 game hitting streak. And uh, she was on ESPN one night and uh, they did a story about it. And uh, there were several times where she was 0 for 3 and came up in the bottom of the seventh and had to have a hit and got it. So her short game was awesome in high school. She basically, if she put it in play, she beat it out. So that's what a good slapper does because she was fast as can be. Uh, and then Larissa Pruitt over in right field. I think she's um, still going to get better and better. Uh, she's probably the second fastest on the team and um, also a green light girl. Played great defense for us in right field. Um, probably either the first or second best arm on the team. Kristen be the other one. Um, and just gets to a lot of balls. Um, and we do have really good depth in the outfield though. So it's, it's gonna be tough to put a lineup out there. A lot of tough decisions. What's the health of the team just coming into this? I think pretty good. There? Kristen had a little minor surgery. So we're hoping that she's gonna be okay. Um, and then, like me, half the team was sick. Um, I don't know if it was, I never really, I didn't think I had the flu. I know I didn't have COVID. It was just a cough and headaches and, you know, it went around Tuscaloosa. So hopefully we can get rid of that, and get ready to play. Because you're talking about Jenna being that leader. Could you talk a little bit about how having your sister here has maybe brought a little bit of that family and camaraderie thing, not only between the two of them, but to the whole team? Yeah, that's, that's, that's you know, I always say there's always a first in our program. Well, one of the first this year was to have sisters on the team. We'd never had that before. And to have them play left and center. And then in fall ball, I batted them one and two, one game. And um, their parents thought that was the coolest thing ever. So uh, both very competitive. And, you know, if we had to vote for most improved from July to now, Lauren Johnson might win it, little sister. Uh, she's gotten stronger. Um, everything about her, she's fundamentally one of the best outfielders we, we have right now as a freshman. 
gets to every ball in center field. Um, you can see her playing a lot, I think. So, but the two of them together, I don't think there's been any issue with anybody. Um, you know, teammate wise, it's, uh, and they don't bicker at all. <laughs> they get along really well. And that, that's probably another really good story for you guys to see how that's going. Uh, I don't think Jenna, you know, tells her to do too much. She's not that type of sister. Uh, Cause I have three sisters <laughs> and I know <laughs> they can, they can do that sometimes, but um, she's, they've been great. So yeah, that was a good question. Coach, I have a quick question. We're seeing like a, it's kind of a pivot. FSU was obviously the biggest example of switching to more of a bullpen and not relying on one pitcher. With you know, two, like I know Kayla talked about how she wants to really work on the, the like, short game. And you have Adam obviously joining as like a, the main hitting coach. And how does that change like the idea? You guys play FSU in March. How does that really adjust how you approach different games? I think, you know, when we have six, and they're very capable, six six pitchers. Why not use them all? You know, and you could see games where it's two three two, two two three, whatever it might be, um, five two five one one. Uh, if somebody has like four four or five lefties in a row, we have a lefty pitcher. And she's got a nasty curveball, so why not put her in against all those lefties? You know, um, it's not like we saw all the baseball coaches this morning. And they come up to say hi and good luck and. I think uh, Coach Jay said they had 20 pitchers. And we almost fell over when he said 20, and we have 22 on our roster, period, but six pitchers. So, um, you know, we, you could see us like mixing and matching because uh, we've got a really good curveball, we've got a really good drop off. Beaver throws 70 or plus. Um, we got the lefty. Uh, we have a freshman that throws up and down with a nasty changeup. Uh, we have um, Ailey Johnson, who we haven't even talked about, but probably has the best changeup we've ever had at Alabama. Maybe Blair Potter, who was a lefty for us, she probably had the best lefty changeup, but Ailey might have the best righty changeup. And she's going to be a weapon, too, because she can throw it any time, any count, no matter who's on base. Just kind of looking ahead to this weekend, the first games. Um... I'm guessing you're probably gonna have five different lineups. Is, is the goal kind of this weekend to, to, to get a lot of people playing time? Yeah, you and got? you know, Georgia Tech, inexpensive trip. We're going the day of the game, so we're gonna leave like at 10 a.m. on Thursday morning. We play at six, so show and go, right? Um, but it's an easy trip for us. Um, AD J Bat used to be at Alabama, so we're gonna say hi to him. And we've known the coaches at Georgia Tech forever, so I think it's a good trip. Um, now I forgot your question. Sorry. Well, it's just kind of like, what, what, <laughs> we what, erase what, all that. What, what are you all looking forward to about this weekend? And then is oh. it going to be trying to get a lot of people in the lineups? Yes. Time? Yes. So probably you're right. Probably five different lineups. Um, two of the three are picked to win their leagues. So Villanova's picked to win the Big East, and Longwood is picked to win their conference. So right away, it's it's um, not like Cupcake City, and you know they're all circling us as the team to beat, especially post Montana right so we have to be ready from first pitch against anybody it doesn't matter you guys know that but um, our sports getting more and more balanced every year well you're gonna let them eat the varsity a couple of them want to and I don't care that's up to them but I probably won't <laughs> Kind of topping I'd off. I'd be on. with you. <laughs> there are a lot of good places deep in Atlanta, yeah. and the varsity is not one of them. <laughs> kind of topping on her question just a second ago about physical health. You know, mental toughness is also a very big part of this game. Do you have any training you do in the off season for in season? Yeah, we actually had um, Dr. Brett McCabe, who everybody probably realizes now that um, he's our um, sports performance coach. Um, lives in Birmingham. He's over uh, every week to work with any athlete that wants to, and uh, Nick our golfer that just won. Uh, that's a prime example of somebody that he works with and is obviously doing really, really well. So each athlete has an opportunity to meet individually with him. And we encourage all the newbies for sure to see him in the fall. And, um, you know, he's a dad of two daughters. He played college baseball. He's won two national championships and he was a pitcher. And he's worked with tremendous athletes in every sport. So, and it's free. <laughs> And it's really across the street from my office by the Col Coleman Coliseum. So, you know, number one, take advantage of his, his expertise. He is a doctor in that. So go see him. And then also, we're really lucky at Alabama that 
and Ben Mitty wants to see a non-sports counselor, that is also free to any athlete at any sport here. So we have done, I think, a really, really good job of mental health and keeping everybody um, you know, safe and on par. And uh, it's just been really, really cool to see when Brett came the other day, um, all 22 just bought in immediately. And his message was awesome. So. What's his last name? McCabe. It's M-C-C-A-B-E, and Brett is B-H-R-E-T-T. -T. It's a weird spelling, but he's a really good guy. He played for Skip Bourbon. Ah. So, you guys good? Yep. Good, thanks. Thank you. I didn't get your name.